Hello guys and welcome to Survival Russia. So today is the day after yesterday as always. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the storm yesterday brought uh, warm weather with it. So uh, today is only like minus eight or something, seas of course. And uh, yeah, today I think I'm gonna do a little uh, video on uh, reality survival again. It's gonna be about fire kit. It's gonna be a fire kit for emergency survival, just for ordinary carry. You can even have it in your car or motorbike or snowmobile. Yeah, as many of you guys know, I like to uh, show things from a non-commercial perspective, you know, like uh, I don't really want to try and sell you anything. I only want to try and sell you stuff that works, right? And this fire kit definitely works, as I said, consists of four parts. Behind us, we have another one of the Russian AK poplars. It's not a poplar, I think, actually, it's a Looks a little bit like a, a, an AK, um, what are they called, willow. Very similar to mine. Let's pick it up and let's head down to the fireplace down here. Also, thank you very much for the positive response on the Saiga video yesterday. That's awesome. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's uh, funny to touch up upon uh, comments and so on. I had a guy commenting that uh, this forest here is not a real forest because only redwoods are real forests. And uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, he said that the forest here was only like sticks and matches or something like this. But uh, it's a forest that is in the process of uh, recovering after logging. But it's a wild forest, and uh, this whole forested area here is most likely the size of Germany or something. So. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that really. Well, there's something interesting over there. I think we have a almost perfectly naturally created shelter here. Looks pretty much like a little shelter in there. Let's take a look. It's difficult to see, but uh, You could crawl in there and cut the lower branches and uh, and wait it out if need be. Pretty neat. We'll head over there to our fireplace from the previous reality of survival thing. So we're here. This is our fire from the from the how to make a fire on deep snow video. You see, it's created quite a large crater down there. We will use this. Uh, fire lay here today I think. Here you can see a little better the crater the fire have created. There are lots of things I really want to show you guys actually and uh, I'll try and make as many videos as possible but uh, today as I said it's about the reality of survival, it's about a survival or outdoorsman or woodsman's uh, fire kit that uh, cost very little and is highly effective, as effective as any man-made commercial fire starters and even better. This is something I put together myself uh, based on what I need or what I would find useful, you know. <laughs> because out here I do not really need uh, inefficient uh, equipment whatsoever. But I have the stuff down here, I will show you all of the components. And um, some of you might think, uh, because the kit consists of a magnesium ferro rod combination. It consists of inner tube from mountain bikes, it can be inner tube from a wheelbarrow, they're even better. It's uh, birch bark and it's chaga. But there's more to it than this. Uh, I want to show you how these things work together in many different ways and why it's so efficient. So let's get to it here. We have the birch bark, the inner tube and the magnesium ferro rod combo. The chaga is over there because that sort of like works for itself. But this has some really, really unique um, properties. So uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But this is a highly, highly efficient fire kit for all situations. Even if you do not have access to birch bark and chaga, you should be able to get it either from friends or if you are in an area where there are birch bark and uh, you are woodsman, outdoorsman, survivalist thing, you should bring it with you because if you are in an, in an area where there are no birch, you will be at a huge advantage having it. <laughs> As example, in this uh, general area here, there are no rocks to be found whatsoever. Not one. So, last time I was in Denmark, 
I picked up a big piece, or actually a few pieces of uh, flint, and now I have in this area some awesome Danish flint that can throw sparks like there's no tomorrow. So let me demonstrate for you how these three things here work together, the inner tube, the birch bark and the mag ferro rod. See from the birch bark here, you are able to make uh, the woodsman's, the Russian woodsman's match as I demonstrated at some point. If you're not carrying a lot of birch bark, but you have inner tube or another fire starter for that matter, then you can uh, then you can actually save up on your on your birch bark by making the woodsman's match. You basically just scrape off the end of the tip of the birch bark, you fold it up like this, so the outside here is on the outside of the match, right? <laughs> so I've fluffed up the match here. Why I've bent it is like <clears throat> it's because that then the birch bark will not curl up on your hands. Here we have our match going. I take a piece of a piece of a inner tube, set it alight. Hopefully, I could use the match here, but if I don't have so much birch bark, I would like to save it a little bit. <laughs> We have our inner tube down here, you can see. Doesn't smell very good, but it's highly, highly effective. <laughs> we have deputy dog coming out there. Awesome. So as you can see, there's a lot of woodsman's matches in such just a small amount of birch bark like this. And as long as you have the woodsman's matches, inner tube and your ferro rod, because you should have that, right? <laughs> then uh, there's not really pr no problems. I'm showing the, the inner tube because I don't really think there are any reason to to, to buy expensive man-made uh, fire starters actually. This is very cheap. But for the magnesium rod, ferro rod combination here, I will link to a video here and I will, I will show a real fast clip on uh, how the magnesium actually works, how you use it correctly, because uh, I have not seen one video on YouTube yet, except my own video on how you actually use it. But if you're carrying a lighter and you don't have any bird spark, inner tube is your friend, that's for sure. But let's take a look at the Chaga, because the Chaga is really, really awesome. It has some really unique qualities when it comes to starting fire and make a very healthy tea. This is why Chaga is also called the gift from the gods. To my knowledge, Chaga is one of the only materials found in nature that can be that can take a spark from a flint and steel without any processing other than being dried. I heard some say something about something called St. Alfred's cake and blah blah blah, but I don't know it, I don't know its quality. So, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, th this is one of the only components anyway found in nature that can take uh, spark from flint and steel. Where the Chaga is really awesome is that, that uh, because it takes a spark easy, then you can also transfer an ember from one piece of Chaga to another piece of Chaga. This can be very, very useful if you are in an emergency situation. If you are in a survival situation and you need to make a boat drill, for example, or hand drill, the ember on a boat drill or hand drill, uh, they are really fragile. When I make a boat drill, I can uh, transfer the boat drill ember to the Chaga and uh, then put the ember from the boat wheel and the chaga into the tender bundle because the and, and that will work and that works really really well because the chaga here the ember will be solid it will be hard it will not uh, it, will, it will not smolder we can say break up in the tender bundle the chaga is of course mostly an emergency fire starter i don't use it to start fire with fires with other than when i'm 
practicing uh, starting fires with chaga. One of the unique things about chaga is that I can start a fire with chaga with only spruce twigs or pine twigs or a mix of them or twigs in general. Something that you will find very, very difficult to do with a bow drill. Some of you have seen this before and might find it boring, but uh, anyway, what we have here is a bundle of spruce twigs, nothing else. I say this should be pretty, pretty difficult to, to light with just an ember from a bow drill. Maybe it's possible, but uh, you know, you can see it's very, very rough. We have all the thinner ends out on this side here. And we have this thicker stuff in here. So what I do is I break out the end here once. So it's like in here. And then I will break it again. So we have something looking like this. In my kit I normally carry this little piece of file here I use for flint and steel. It's the, and, and, uh, but I also use it for making uh, magnesium powder with, for example. It's really good at that and uh, the file is always handy, right? So I take my Danish piece of flint here and a piece of chaga and the flint is very small. Now we have our ember going here. That's not bad at all. Just for showing you guys, we have a fresh piece. Here we have the growing ember. See, that's all you need. Then you can have this laying around and it will not go out. <laughs> so we put it here. You can see this. Nothing but spruce twigs in here. Well, just leave it there for a little while. I will most likely edit this, but I'm not cheating. My channel is not about cheating. <laughs> for the ones of you who don't know, especially in winter, the breath is not always the best to use. It's much better to use the waving technique. It can be a little cold on the hands. <laughs> As you can see, we have the growing ember here. If this little piece of chaga is not enough, I can add it. We have some wind that can help us a little bit, maybe. And we have fire. Well, some might be of the opinion that if you have a ferro rod and magnesium combo, then you will always have fire, and that is almost true, but not necessarily. And if you are in an uh, emergency situation of some sort or need a fire fast, then having a backup fire kit is uh, really awesome, and the ferro rod will, of course, work in. Uh, combination with uh, these items that I'm just showing you, right? If you're in an environment with only one type of tree, for example spruce or pine or something like this, then you'll have to make uh, scrapings and this and that and and and, uh, and even a pile of scrapings if you only have a ferro rod and not a magnesium combo, then the pile it will it will burn with a small flame to begin with and tra la 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 la. So uh, it would be better to, to it would be good to have some uh, some inner tube that you could add to this little pile of scrapings that you just set on fire with your ferro rod because then you'll have a super fast way 
to get the fire going instead of having to sit and nurse this little pile there with small twigs and sticks and blah 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 especially if it's windy or rainy or something like that right <laughs> also on a completely different note you can see just this small fires i uh, ignited the logs are really smoldering well i hope it goes on the cam <laughs> I can warm my hands over this, no problem at all. It's just like the Siberian log fire. It's also a native fire and uh, they're really easy to reignite and uh, they're meant for several continuous uses. So ever since I learned these types of fires, I have never looked back on uh, splitting wood any longer. <laughs> This is much more effective. So yeah guys, I hope you like this uh, video on how to set up a very effective and efficient fire kit. I don't know, tomorrow we might just go out on a off the wall random hike. Maybe down to the beaver dam or something. It's one of my favorite places. But yeah, but until then, check the links in the description and uh, sub share, subscribe, sub like and sub bell. And until next time, get out and train and get it done. And see you next time right here in wintertime Russia. Thank you for your time guys.